so let us uh, work with windows base now so here I have a list box a combo box where I have the items in it see here I have items in it it's the same thing first i need to find number of items and after that i need to get all the items using its index numbers using its index numbers so let's do that so first i have added that into object repository so here uh, we are going to use one extra method for the combo boxes what we have is get items count get items count will be using here if you want you can use get rvo properties of item count anything okay but even we have this option here so let me explain you that get items count see here get items count it only works for the combo boxes clear if you want you can go with get rvo property of item count also what we have done as earlier even that will also work so let me take this into a variable again as an item count represents i count i count let me take this into variable i have taken it so let me uh, take it into loop for i iterator is equal to 1 to i count 1 to i count so in this case we'll go with 0 to i count minus 1 i count minus 1 so here index number starts with 0 let's assume that if it doesn't work we'll change into 1 but here in this case it will work with 0 but i is equal to 0 to i count minus 1 the same thing here and before that, that let me know how many items are there so simply i can call print number of items i count i count c o u n t dot get item using its index number so let it i take i here the same thing again print index number that will be i ampersand index number zero index number item is let me take this into variable the value what i am going to get as uh, item name item name the variable so now let me run this test so you people just have a look on the console
so one thing here actually we have not given ampersand so i have taken the ampersand and even let me name this properly let me write it as a name one what i am going to get or else let me write it as a get item so i name that would be great for this i name the item name so let's print the i name simple I name. So let me run this. Now looks everything is fine here. So here it takes the index number with zero actually in this case. In the web based, it's a web list actually. It is taking it from one index number. So make sure that. So don't get confused over there. So number of items are 10. So here it is printing all the items one after the other. You can simply have a look on the console. Here we go. zero index number item is denver one id index number is frankfurt so here i have done some spelling mistake and it has written the same thing okay so let me change it i and dex index number is the one index number is so and so two index number is so and so let me print run this again so that it prints it properly Here we go. Zero index number item is London and so on like that. Okay. So now we'll move on to the bit advanced concepts here. So here we are getting in a print log. We are happy with it. Now we'll work with file system objects. So I want to create a notepad and I need to send this data to the notepad file system object. So let me save this and we'll have a look on file system object and we'll come back and rather than printing this, let's create a notepad and let's send this data into that notepad. Okay. Yes. The file system objects. So it's not a part of QTP is one, but it's a general topic like file system objects. Okay which is related to the file system that we'll be implementing in our UFT. Okay. So file system objects is not directly related to the UFT. Is that clear? So in the next session, we'll be having a look of a very important one that is file system objects. So in here, the basic things we are going to see like how to work with a notepad in file system objects. Okay.